Hey guys, and welcome back to the Fantasy Table, brought to you by the Blue Stable. I know it's been a while, but it is me, your host, Luke Verkamp. And today with me, I got our new co-host, Austin Isaac. Austin, how is it going today? Hey, pretty good, man. I'm just just here to talk some football. That's pretty much it. That's great. That's what we like to hear. Fantasy football is always fun to talk about, isn't it? Oh, for sure. Every year. Every year. Every year. How long have you been playing fantasy for? Um probably since I was about nine years old, honestly. I mean, I, I, my first season of fantasy football was probably around there. I was, I was a child, so I didn't, I didn't really know too much about football. I didn't really start coming to that until, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. And I uh, got taken advantage of a lot in that league full of grown men who just knew there was a child in that league. And I going back and looking at some of my older messages, I actually just saw some, uh, few weeks ago um, with some people that were in that league. I don't know what prompted me to look for them, but I found them and, and it was just them trading me. I mean, nobody's for like, you know, the big top guys. Like I think I traded Peyton Manning away for, I don't even remember who, but it was like a nobody who was, <laughs> it was bad. It was bad, but I, I think I've come a long way since then. Yeah, no, I definitely yeah. feel that. I, I gotta say, I know I started in 2014. And I was in high school by then, but like, I didn't know much about fantasy football and it's not recommended to drive quarterbacks in the first round, but I took Andrew Luck in the first round. Turns out that was one of his best years as a pro whenever he threw 40 touchdowns. Worked out. Worked out pretty good. Also got Demarius (laughs) Thomas when that was the year that Manning had his record 55 touchdowns. So I was like, okay, turned out all right. But yeah. And I also dropped, Todd Gurley in the middle of the season right before he like took off so that was kind of a pretty big mistake but hey everyone's got to start somewhere yeah oh I know it I know it all right well how about we talk some today football instead of a long time ago football (laughs) please do I would like to erase that from my memory (laughs) <laughs> all right so we're going to start out with the news and notes this is basically all the injuries and big news that's happened over the weekend and we'll start out juju smith schuster he's out the rest of the season with a shoulder injury Taysom hill he got carted out with a concussion so if he is out for longer than a few weeks michael thomas he might get more work when he gets back Alvin Kamara, he could get more red zone work instead of them plugging in Taysom Hill randomly to get goal line work. Um, Tom Brady, he was seen icing his hand towards the end of the game, but he should be good to go for Thursday night. Gronk is officially out for Thursday night with his ribs, so that ups the Buccaneers wide receivers. Saquon Barkley is likely out two to four weeks with an ankle sprain. We'll get to that later in the waiver section. Daniel Jones is concussed, and it looked like a really rough concussion, so I don't expect him to be back this week at least, potentially longer. Kenny Galladay, he had a knee injury. He is for sure out this week and possibly more. Max Williams from the Cardinals, he is out for the rest of the season with a knee injury. There's rumors that the Cardinals are potentially looking to trade for a tight end. Samaj P. Ryan of the Bengals is on the reserve COVID list. He should be back by this weekend's game, but if not, Chris Evans is going to get more work as Samaj was splitting with Joe Mixon while he was nursing his injury. Clyde Edwards Alaire is out with an MCL sprain for a few weeks. He is already on IR, so he's going to miss at least the next three games. Tyreek Hill also got a knee injury in this game and he is not expected to miss any time. Tua through on Monday, so it is possible that he is going to come back this week. Damian Harris had a chest injury. He is just day-to-day, so he still has a chance to play this weekend. Justin Fields hyperextended his knee, underwent some tests, though he came back in the game after he hyperextended it, so he might be able to play through this one. He's a tough boy. You can get through it, I'm sure. Yeah, Ohio State, you should know about this. Oh, yeah. Oh, so trust much. me. I know. I've watched him with a brace on his knee come taken out of the game after he taken a hit straight to that brace out of the game for one play, came back in and ran a touchdown. And that's Justin Fields. He's tough. 
I gotta say, he seems like a really tough guy, kind of a guy that I would want on my team. Mm -hmm. Um, Hopefully he can keep growing with the bears because any more time out, like it just, he's just going to be thrown in and out the lineup. That's not good for him. You got to keep that momentum as a rookie quarterback. I feel and if he, if he, if he's out for you know an extended period of time at any point in time, he's going to ruin that momentum. He's got to start that all back up again as a rookie. Yeah, very true. I got to say, especially as he's developing that connection with Darnell Mooney, especially and Allen Robinson and a couple of the running backs that they got there. Big one that came out this morning was Dallas Goddard is on the COVID reserve list. So he, he is vaccinated. It came out that he is vaccinated. So all he needs is two negative tests within 24 hours of each other. But that means that he is most likely not going to play Thursday, barring almost a miracle. I feel like if it was if it was on any other day, if it was on, if it was a Sunday game, he'd probably be okay to play. I'm sure, but because you know it's a short week for them, he's got literally two days to get a two day test done. Right. Uh, it seems likely if he tested positive once already. I gotta say it, it'd be pretty hard to do if you test positive on Tuesday and test negative on Wednesday and Thursday before the game. So yeah, I definitely agree with you there. And then the big one, the other big one today was that the Chiefs are reportedly interested in trading for Marlon Mack. Now, Austin, what do you think about this? If the Chiefs traded for Marlon Mack, would it change the look of Daryl Williams or what? So, you know, based on how Marlon Mack is, us as Colts fans understand as a player, we understand that he is pretty much what we, we discussed this yesterday, actually last night on Monday Night Football. He is not the greatest of athletes, but has insane ball carrier vision. This dude can see the holes, he can find the holes, and he will hit them hard. And that is a, a pretty good uh, – trait to have as a running back it's probably one of the best traits you can have as a running back and i think if he was a better athlete he would probably be an rb1 on most teams but you know the fact that you know he's not the greatest of athletes it's not to say he's a bad athlete but he's not you know as great of an athlete as guys like you know on his own team like jonathan taylor like naeem hines um i think if the chiefs got him uh, i would be pretty upset because that's basically just helping the enemy because as of right now, the Chiefs are kind of in the same boat as the Colts are in. Where, you know, I'm I'm sure they're going to turn this around at some point, but they're at, at this point in time fighting for a playoff spot. And if the Colts help them in any way to get to that playoff spot, that's giving the Colts who are scratching and clawing at the bottom of the barrel right now, that is giving them much less of a chance of getting there. Um, as much as I would like to see Mac go and thrive somewhere, I'd like to see him go and thrive somewhere like Miami or like San Francisco, where it's not really going to affect the Colts at all. I got to say, yeah, like Marlon Mack, he's a great player. I mean, he was a thousand yard rusher for a reason. Like he is very good with the football in his hands. But like thousand yard rushers. Yeah. Yeah. But I got to say, the thing is, is that, like you said, Jonathan Taylor is just like a much better athlete. There are much better athletes than what he is. He's got that vision though. I got to say, yeah, if we give them to the Chiefs, if we give them to the Ravens, that's just helping out people that we might have to play later down the line. Um, as for me with Mac, I don't see him as an interest of fancy wise. I might, if you have a bench spot that you don't like, you can you feel free to drop and you don't get one of these top waiver guys. I don't mind throwing a dart at him just to see like if they get him and if he takes over instead of Daryl Williams, just try it out. But other than that, I don't really see much value if he does go there. Yeah. I think if you've got a bench spot available, you know, go ahead and pick him up just in case. I also think it's probably not going to be, you know, a trade that's going to happen within the next week or so. So you can always wait just in case. And maybe see what team he goes to because I feel like it, I really feel like it depends on the team he goes to is if he's worth a fantasy pickup or not. Um, if he goes to a team that is desperate for running backs like like the Ravens are right now, they are pretty desperate for running backs. Um, anything to take take that weight off of Lamar's shoulders, 
to, you know, be the only option in that run game right now. Um, if he goes somewhere like that, where he becomes that instant RB one, where he, you know, is going to be actually featured in the offense, then maybe, you know, uh, pick him up, try to be the first person to beat everybody else to free agent to pick him up there. Um, but I, at this point in time, I feel like he's much of a fantasy pick. Uh, maybe something to watch though, for sure. I gotta say, that's why I say I wouldn't do anything but a dart throw at him. Because, yeah, if he does end up on the Ravens, all they got right now for competition is an old Latavius Murray. Um, I know they got Freeman there. They used him a bit last night and Le'Veon Bell, but they just go up and down from the practice squad. So they obviously aren't that high on either one of those guys. But, yeah, he's got – there's plenty of options out there of teams that have needs at running back that Mac would be perfect to go to. I know you also mentioned the Dolphins. The Dolphins would be a great place for him to go. Um, he is from that Miami area, too. Oh, yeah, that is true. I forgot about that. Yeah. I, I was kind of hoping when the Colts played the Dolphins a couple of weeks ago that I, I kept joking uh, <laughs> with the other staff on uh, Blue Stable. I was joking that we would just leave him in Miami and just let him play there. I, I was really hoping that that would happen. Just for him, not not for me trying to get rid of, rid of Marlon Mack, but for – for him to actually get a chance to shine, I, I, that's what I was hoping for. For his sake to let him be at his hometown area. Right, exactly. Let him play in front of his family every week. Right. Well, while we're on the topic of waiver pickups, how about we go into our top waiver pickups this week? Which, starting at quarterback, for me, I put down Taylor Heineke. Heineke is actually very good fantasy-wise which I know Heineke is not like someone that you enjoy having as a starter over other quarterbacks, bigger names, but Heineke is, I believe like 14th among quarterbacks for points this season, which is crazy. I, he is around there, yeah. I gotta say, I know he's around that area. I'm not sure the exact number off the top of my head. But he also has a very good matchup this week. Like, he is a plug-and-play guy this week for fantasy. And he's going to be available in a lot of leagues just because of his name. And he's on the Washington offense, which hasn't been great. But, yeah, I think he's a great uh, – I did go ahead and check for you, not to interrupt, but I did go ahead and check. He is exactly 14th. He is, he is 14th. The 14th right now. So, like I say, I, I looked earlier today, so I thought 14 was sticking out in my head, so I thought so. <laughs> oh. Anyway, who do you have for quarterback this week? So who we've got here is I feel like it's a pretty obvious option with Russell Wilson going down um, with that finger injury that he's got right now. No one knows when exactly he's going to be coming back. So as of right now, former first-round pick, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, Geno Smith, he is coming in, he is going to start, and he's going to take over the league. And he, I swear he's going to take the Seattle Seahawks. He's, I mean, better than Russell Wilson. What can you do? And it's obvious he showed it on, on a Thursday night last week. He is the better than Russell Wilson. He almost led that game-winning drive. Very high on Geno Smith. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But he, uh, he, he is going to be a solid pickup. Uh, he's got some great weapons there. Uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Even if Geno Smith can't get the job done, they will – basically force him to get the job done by making him look much better than I'm sure he is. He is 31 years old right now. So, I mean, it's, he's, he's pretty old. I'm sure he is not, I mean, he, even as a first round pick, he wasn't the quarterback that everybody expected him to be. So, you know, it, it would be interesting to see what he can do with that offense given, you know, a full week of practice too and everything. It's, it'll be, it'll be fun. I'm sure. But yeah, yeah. He also has, uh, Chris Carson nursing an injury out there. So they have Alex Collins as their starting running back. So they're going to more lean on the pass than what they mm-hmm. would if Carson is in. Now moving to running backs. My running back of the week this week is Devontae Booker. I really think Devontae Booker m- might be my top pickup this week. He's 1A and 1B whichever way you want to go with the next guy that Austin will talk about. But Devontae Booker with Saquon being out for the next two to four weeks, I think that he is going to be put in a workhorse position because the Giants, they like to feed one person. 
so far this year they have been, which I mean, it's Saquon, so obviously you're going to feed him. But if you look at the team right now, there's nobody really behind him that's going to take touches away from Booker. And while I know the Rams and Carolina isn't the prettiest matchups that you want, which I'll talk about this more later, I still think he is going to get enough touches to where you want him on your team. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much agree. I think he's going to get a small amount of touches that's going to get uh, probably not Saquon Barkley touches. I think he'll get close to Saquon Barkley touches. Um, I think he'll be a really solid option. I like Devontae Booker a lot. I think he's a solid running back. Um, the only thing that worries me, though, is in that Giants offense, they showed on Sunday that they really like using Kadarius Toney, too. And Kadarius Toney is that guy who can play really anywhere on the field. And we'll, we'll get to Kadarius Toney later down the line here, but he's, he's a guy that can play pretty much anywhere on that offense. He, can, he showed it. He was in the Wildcat. He, you know, lined up outside. He lined up in the slot. He lined up at a running back. He, he, I mean, he did pretty much everything, uh, including throwing punches that he should not have thrown. Uh, but he was he was a really solid fantasy option this week. And like I said, we'll get to him later. But, he, you know, that's the only thing that worries me with uh, Devontae Booker is that Kadarius Sony is going to be taking some of those snaps from him. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. I, I do agree. The big thing that happened this past weekend is that Booker got two touchdowns, which – is really good. They like using their running backs down in the red zone. So, but Kadarius Tony, he is a gadget guy, so he could get some of those touches as well. Uh, this this next guy, um, you know, an, another pretty obvious option here coming up is is with Clyde Edwards Hilaire being put on IR. Um, he is basically they're going to go straight to their backup running back here. Darryl Williams, if Darryl is going to come up now because he has already been getting touches as it is with Clyde Edwards Hilaire in the offense. If he's got touches with, with, you know, the RE one in the offense, imagine what he's going to do with basically nobody else. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's a pretty solid option here. He is, especially this week, he's a, he's a pretty solid option because he's going against uh, Washington, I believe, which is like one of the worst teams against the run. Um, I think they're letting up the 10th most points or top 10 again, to uh, fantasy running backs. So it's a pretty solid option there if you want to pick him up, even put him in that lineup. I'm sure Pat Mahomes is going to, you know, get him some touches. He'll be pretty featured, I'm sure. Yeah, he's definitely going to be used a lot in that Chiefs offense. Like you said, he already has been, even with Clyde Edwards earlier in there. So that just means, like, without Clyde in there, he's just going to get even more. And that – Williams also brings me into my next guy, which is Jarek McKinnon. Yes, I know he is still in the league, but he's somebody to talk about. I would only pick him up if you're in a deep, like, 14-team league, PPR only. Like, he is just one of those, like, guys. He could get six targets a game, um, depending on the game script. So he's not a guy that I would recommend as your top waiver pickup, but he is a guy to keep an eye on while Clyde is out for the next few weeks. I'm sure if, if they want to get Daryl Williams some touches, if, if he was getting touches with Clyde Edwards Hilaire starting, I'm sure with Daryl Williams starting, uh, Jarek McKinnon's going to get some touches. I almost forgot his name because I forgot he was even existed to be honest, but you know, that's not a, it's not a bad option for sure because Jared McKinnon is, is still a solid running back. I remember he was supposed to be much better than he actually ended up being back when he was with the Niners. Um, but, you know, he's, he's still pretty good. So I, it wouldn't be terrible to pick him up, especially if it's a deep league that you've got going on. Uh, everybody who's got those 32 man leagues going on, those, those chaotic leagues, um, he, he's probably a pretty good option for that for sure. If he's even available, uh, probably not in most 32 man leagues. He's probably taken in some of them, but uh, just somebody, if he's, if he's on your waiver wires and you've got some room for him, you know, throw, you know, throw a, an option out there, see if you can get him. Why not? This, uh, this next guy that we've got is going to be AJ Dillon. Uh, the Packers have been using him quite a bit actually recently which is surprising because Aaron Jones is supposed to be that bell cow back. Hasn't really been that bell cow back too much. He's been really good. Don't get me wrong, but uh, AJ Dillon in the last two weeks uh, has gotten 
He got 15 carries two weeks ago against Pittsburgh, and he got eight carries last week against Cincinnati, which eight carries doesn't seem like a lot because it wasn't. But he also got four receptions for 49 yards and a touchdown last week against Cincinnati. So they're they're featuring him pretty heavily, even not just not just in the rushing game, but they're featuring him in the uh, passing game as well. He's got on the year. Let me see here. Two, four, eight. He's got nine receptions on the year in five games as a running back, as a, a power back. He's not really that much of a receiving back, but he's got nine receptions. So Aaron Rodgers likes him a lot. Uh, he's got, you know, 10 plus points for the last two weeks. So if you've got a deep league, I think he's a pretty solid pickup too. Yeah. Big thing about AJ is that if Aaron, anything happens to Aaron Jones, he is going to be the top waiver priority oh, straight yeah. away. He will be, he'll vault to a top five back if Aaron Jones goes down. So my recommendation, pick him up now while you got the chance. I didn't think that, I didn't think A.J. Dillon would be the one filling the Jamal Williams role whenever he left, but turns out he is, and turns out he's getting the targets, which I wasn't expecting from him. I was just expecting more from Aaron Jones. But if he's getting targets and he's getting usage, you got to pick him up, especially in that offense where it's just basically Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, and not many anybody else. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now for this next guy that I'll talk about is another running back. It's Alex Collins. I'm mainly just throwing this guy out just because Chris Carson's hurt. We don't know the real extent of the injury yet. He he could easily play this week. He might not. Um, but he is a handcuff to have that if Carson is out for a longer period of time, that you have somebody – a starting running back that you can play if you need a running back, which most people need running backs in fantasy. Right. I think if, if you've got Chris Carson on your team and Chris Carson is not going to play, is he, is he on IR Chris Carson? I don't think he is. Is he? I don't think he actually got put on IR. I just know that they said he had, what was it? A neck injury that they said. Yeah. They did something like that. It, something. It could be a lengthy injury. And I'm just like, you like they never gave a timetable for it, but they didn't put him on IR either. So yeah. I think I think Alex Collins isn't you know too terrible, especially with I know we just talked about Geno Smith being featured because there isn't really a run game because of Alex Collins. But now you got to look at the flip side of that. Maybe what if they're looking at it as Alex Collins can be featured because Geno Smith is the quarterback. So, I mean, it can really go vice versa here. Um, you kind of got to watch and something to keep your eye on, on for that. Um, last week, from a statistical standpoint, Alex Collins, 15 carries. You know, in the top 10, I believe, last week in terms of running back carries, he was. So, you know, that's something you want to look at. If that's somebody you want to take a look at. If you've got Chris Carson on your team and he's going to be sitting on your bench now because he's not going to play, take a look at Alex Collins, see if you can pick him up. You know, it can't hurt for sure. This next guy that we've got here uh, is a Rams running back. We've got another running back here. Uh, we're going to see if we can go through every running back in the league at this point. Um, this Rams running back is going to be Sony Michelle. It's not going to be Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson has been bouncing in and out of that was on. I guess if Henderson was on waiver wires, then there is a problem in that league, and I want to yeah, be in it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. If, if Daryl Henderson's on waiver wires, forget everything I'm about to say. Go pick up Daryl Henderson right now. Stop the video. Stop listening to what we're saying. Go pick up Daryl Henderson and then come back. Um, but Sony Michelle right now, with Daryl Henderson bouncing in and out of that injury circle, Sony Michelle's getting that majority of those touches. He's getting those touches that he should have been getting in New England and he's getting, and he's starting to look like that running back that everybody thought he was going to look like in New England. He was looking like that a lot on uh, last Thursday. He was looking like, you know, the, the Sony Michelle at Georgia that we all knew and loved the Sony Michelle that apparently New England thought was better than Nick Chubb. I'm not one of those people that thought that I thought Nick Chubb was the better running back to begin with, but because Nick Chubb was hurt a lot at Georgia, they took Sony Michelle ahead of him. It, it is what it is. It's, it's history from there, but it's, you know, it's best that Nick Chubb's getting those touches now and, instead of being not used in New England. Um, but Sony Michelle, 11 carries last week. He got a touchdown. He got in that end zone. So, I mean, it, it's something to take a look at for sure if he's on your waiver wires. I got to say, with Sony, it's mainly just in case of a Daryl Henderson injury, kind of like A.J. Dillon. 
if Henderson goes down for a long period of time, he's going to get a lot of carries. I know he's, to me, Sony's not as good as A.J. Dillon is, so, but if he goes down, he's still in the Rams' offense. He's still going to get a lot of touches. Essentially the handcuff at this point. Right, which, I mean, with how many injuries are going on, like, you almost need the handcuffs. Yeah, oh, my God. Injuries every week, I feels like. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of injuries, we'll go to our next guy, which is our top wide receiver pick of the week. We mentioned him earlier. It's Kadarius Toney. Um, the Giants, they basically lost their whole offense. Uh, Sterling Shepard's out. Darius Slayton's out. Kenny Galladay went out. Saquon Barkley went out. Daniel Jones went out. All that was left was Kadarius Toney. He got 10 receptions, over 150 yards, and a touchdown. And they are finally using him how he should be used. And if they keep using him, which they should now that they – they have solid. Um, he is. He could be a league winner. He could be an every week flex starter for you. So, I say he. If you are good enough at running back that you don't need a temporary solution to running back, I would use your top priority waiver on on Kadarius Tony. So that way, you have a guy that could be a flex the rest of the season. Yeah, I think Kadarius Tony for sure is a guy that should be picked up immediately if he is sitting on your waiver rise right now. In most leagues that I'm in, he's not. These people are smart. They are, you know, they've already got him on the team just in case. I like Kadarius Tony a lot coming out of Florida. I thought he was that that big gadget guy. I thought he could get touches from pretty much every side of the ball. Um he the only reason he dropped is because there was a question about his his catching, which I never saw at Florida. I saw a lot of the senior bowl, but I never saw anything about it. Um, so, I mean, I'm not quite understanding why he dropped that far. He was actually one of my top receivers in this class. The first few weeks in New York, he didn't do anything. It almost seemed like Joe Judge didn't know how to use him. So now he's starting to come into himself because he – all the injuries ahead of him, um, Shepard, Slayton, uh, Galladay now, everybody's hurt. So he is basically the only option on that offense, especially with Saquon Barkley gone. He's the only option on that offense. If, if Daniel Jones doesn't play this week, which it doesn't look like he's going to because of that concussion, this is going to be the Kadarius Tony show this week. This is going to be a major start. He had 189 receiving yards last week on uh, 10 receptions, 189 receiving yards. So, I mean, it, it's definitely something you're going to want. He had 30 points in fantasy and a PPR. So, I mean, it's big 13 targets as well which is huge yes. like you don't see many guys get that many targets so yeah i mean it's it, he is he's he's really good and I, i'm excited to see how they use him and i hope they use him uh how he should be used and not how they've been using him the first couple weeks of the season they looked like last week and a little bit the week before that they started using him how he is supposed to be used which you know, it really, it really helped me as a, as a football fan who was watching him at Florida and in the senior bowl. And I'm like, this guy can be used in so many different ways. And if he goes to the wrong team and if they don't use him like that, it's going to be just chaos and I'm going to hate it. And it looks like they're finally starting to do that, which I love. So that's always good. This, uh, this next guy we've got is another receiver here. Uh, we're getting into receivers now. This is going to be Amon Ross St. Brown of the Detroit Lions. Uh, as of right now, there is pretty much nobody ahead of Almond Ross St. Brown on that, on that depth chart. Uh, Khalif Raymond, Quintez Cephas both went down with injuries on Sunday. Tyro Williams still on IR. Uh, Quintez Cephas is also expected to go on IR with him. As of right now, he is at least. So it looks like he, uh, if Khalif Raymond plays this week, I think they've got him higher on the depth chart. But I like Almond Ross St. Brown a lot more. I liked him a lot coming out of USC. I thought he wasn't the most tremendous athlete, um, kind of like Michael Pittman coming out. I think he had the hands. I think he had the route running, but I didn't think he was the greatest athlete. Michael Pittman starting to look like a better athlete. Always got to shout out our Colts. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown, I, it was a guy that I wanted to be paired up with Michael Pittman on the Colts. Didn't end up happening. It is what it is. But now he is with Detroit, uh, which is basically hell, but it is what it is. Uh, he's got Jared Goff throwing to him. 
he's pretty much the only option at this point. I mean, it's, it's him. Hawkinson. So as a rookie, it's going to be very exciting to see what Amon Ra St. Brown does. Yeah. Big thing about Amon Ra is that it is the lions and they're going to be playing from behind a lot this year. And with Hawkinson being the only like bigger name target on that offense, they're going to be double teaming him more. And Amon Ra St. Brown's probably going to get a lot of, one-on-one coverage to be able to see what he can do. He's really their best wide receiver option at this point. I know they'll probably throw the ball. Yeah, by far. But yeah, he'll most likely they'll the Lions will most likely throw like the ball to DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams as well. But they gotta have a wide receiver to do something. And I do believe he is that guy as well. Interesting fact here from last week is Amon Ross St. Brown had five more targets than TJ Hawkinson last week. And Amon Ross St. Brown had the exact same amount of targets as TJ Hawkinson the week before. So it looks like they really like him. Looks like Jared Goff is starting to build that chemistry with him. So it might be something to, to, to keep an eye on if you really, if you want that receiver. Yeah. If you're in a dynasty league, he might be a good buy while you can right now, because if he builds chemistry with Jared Goff and ends up being that number one receiver, wait till the next couple of years whenever they get a new quarterback and, and he could could do very well. Mm-hmm. For sure. Now with this next receiver that I'm going to talk about, he is more of a safe play receiver other than a big dog receiver like Kadarius Tony is, and it's going to be Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick is a guy that has should have been picked up a long time ago, but he just keeps on slipping through waivers just because it's, it's Tim Patrick and nobody wants to pick him up. Um, he, other than week four against Baltimore, he has had over 10 points, 10 fantasy points every game. And it's, it's just one of those things that Jerry Judy is still out. KJ Hamler towards ACL. You, Someone's got to get the ball. And Teddy has been thrown a lot to Cortland Sun, and he's been thrown a lot to Tim Patrick. Um, when Jerry Judy comes back, he might not be as great of a play, but till he's back, Tim Patrick, he, that's an easy 10 points if you just need a safe play for a flex spot for a week. Sure. It seems really like – I didn't think they was going to be like this in Denver, but it really seems like they like throwing the ball with Teddy B, which I don't have an issue with. I've always liked Teddy B. That's Teddy two gloves, man. You got to put some respect on his name. He knows what he's doing. So, I mean, uh, I liked him a lot in Minnesota. He didn't really do too much outside of Minnesota, which a lot of people thought he was going to. A lot of people thought he was going to come back from that terrible injury and dominate once again. He was really starting to come to his own. He really started looking like, He was, you know, going to be a top quarterback at some point in the future. That injury just halted all momentum he had at all. Um, And now it's it's starting to look like old Teddy B, to be honest, Um, which I really like for a Teddy did go like four or six and oh in the Saints that year before Jameis got there. That's true. So, I mean, you know, it's starting to look like Teddy B's back. That's what it it seems like to be honest. Um, So, I mean, he's starting to like his receivers a lot. I thought they were going to lean heavily on that run game, especially when they drafted Javante Williams. thought they were going to lean heavily on that run game because they didn't know who the quarterback was. It's starting to look like Teddy Bridgewater's the quarterback. If he can stay healthy, I think he can build a chemistry with these guys. Um, Like you said, Jerry Judy's out. What's new at this point? Jerry Judy's out all the time. Jerry Judy, great receiver, you know, could easily be one of the best in the league. He just needs to stay healthy. He needs a good quarterback throwing to him too. And it looks like maybe he has that. They'll probably still draft one. If they're smart, they'll draft one. Um, But Tim Patrick for at least a week or two is probably a good pickup because he's going to get some targets. Moving on the tight ends. um, Our first tight end that we've got here is going to be Ricky Seals Jones, Washington football team's tight end. Logan Thomas, he's on IR. He's done for at least a few weeks. Ricky Seals-Jones had that, I don't know if you remember this, but against the Giants uh, on, I think it was Sunday Night Football 
or Thursday Night Football, one of the two. It was a primetime game. That's the only reason I was watching Giants-Washington. That's the only reason I would ever need to watch that. Um, he had that that pretty, very pretty toe-tap or touchdown in the end zone. Well, obviously, it was in, in the end zone. It was a touchdown. Um, and that that start started the, uh, the Ricky Seals-Jones hype. He didn't do anything the week after that. The week after that was at Atlanta. He had a few receptions, a couple receptions, didn't really do much. And then Logan Thomas went on IR. Logan Thomas is out. The one thing about Washington that you got to look out for is that Washington loves to throw their tight ends in the red zone. So surprise, if he gets a little touch in the red zone, Logan Thomas, before getting hurt, was, I believe, top 10 in red zone targets. So if, if he's healthy, if Ricky Seals-Jones is healthy, I mean, then he's going to be getting some some looks in the red zone by Taylor Heineke for sure. Well, you look at this past week, he had eight targets, and now Curtis Samuel is out again with that groin injury. So who knows whenever he'll come back again. Right. And this week he's got Kansas City, which gives up a lot of points to tight end. Mm-hmm. The next do what? Tenth against tight end. That's just saying Kansas City has given up the 10th most points to tight ends. 10th most points, yeah. If if, if you pick up Ricky Seals Jones, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to start him too. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be a bad play. Especially with how the tight Actually, end position is. Six... You said the sixth most? Yeah, uh, fifth. Fifth. Given up the fifth most. Uh, they are they are very bad against tight ends. So wow. Taylor Heineke can throw Ricky Seals Jones if he wants to. Yeah, don't be so, surprised. If he's another Tutty this week. Well, dang that. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So yeah, yeah Ricky Seals not a bad play this week. Um, next guy that I will talk about is a Patriots player, even though I do not like talking about Patriots players. Um, but it's going to be Henry Hunter Henry, and the reason for Hunter Henry. The reason for Hunter Henry is because he is outproducing John o. Smith. Like he has taken over the tight end one role in New England, and he's gotten touchdowns on back to back weeks. He's getting a lot of targets now. He's very involved in this offense, and you can't ignore it, especially at the tight end position. So to me, he's a pretty big pickup this week. I've one and love to start him, but I, I'm totally fine with starting him over some other players that you're picking up this week or that you may have already. Like if you need a replacement for Dallas Goddard, there you go. Hunter Henry, you can just pick him up and play him. Yeah, for sure. Um, Hunter Henry, as of right now, just had to double check there. Hunter Henry is averaging a full target and a full reception more than Jonu Smith averaging, of course, because at the beginning of the season, it really seemed like Jonu Smith was that tight end one. Now it looks like it's starting to flip. Now it looks like Hunter Henry's that tight end one, which is something you got to watch out for. It could be flipping flopping throughout the season because these are both really good tight ends. But as of right this second, Hunter Henry is that top dog. Um, they are going to go up against the Dallas Cowboys this week who are pretty mid pack against tight ends. Um, but, you know, it still wouldn't be a bad option to, to throw Hunter Henry in there if you want. Even if he's on waiver wire, pick up Hunter Henry. I mean, he should be on your team regardless of anything else. He is, as of right now, the number nine tight end in fantasy. So, I mean, you know, having a top 10 tight end on your team, if, unless you're in an eight-man league, having a top 10 tight end on your team is not a bad uh, option right now to have. So that's something you probably definitely got to take a look at. Um, if you've got Johnu Smith on your team and not Hunter Henry and Hunter Henry sitting there in free agency, I don't care if you drop Johnu Smith. I don't care if you trade him. Just get Hunter Henry on there over Johnu Smith. Whatever you get, I think Hunter Henry is the better tight end as a player. And I think that Bill Belichick likes using his tight ends a lot, as we saw every year that Gronk was there. Um, so I think, you know, these these dual tight end, this back and forth that he's got going on there, eventually one's going to rise above the other one. And I really think it's going to be Hunter Henry. On the subject of dual tight ends, uh, our next um, 
waiver wire pickup is going to be Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz last week uh, did pretty well. He did pretty decently. I'm sorry, not last week, the week before. And then the week before that, last week, he was not well. He had six targets last week, but only was able to haul one of them in for seven yards. Um, But the week before that, he had eight targets. The week before that, he had seven targets. And that's with Dallas Goddard. This week, it doesn't seem like Dallas Goddard's going to be playing. So if you have Zach Ertz sitting there in frequency, go ahead and pick him up. I still think Zach Ertz can be a top 10 tight end. In, as a player, not necessarily in fantasy. I don't think, I think that's pretty much out the window unless he gets traded, which I don't think he's going to at this point. Um, but I think if Zach Ertz is sitting there right now, he is going up against Tampa Bay, who we've already established as terrible defending tight ends. You grab Zach Ertz, he is probably going to at least get you a touchdown this week. Yeah. With Dallas Goddard out, there's really no other receiving threat on the team. Devontae Smith is there. Um, Jalen Hurts really likes to keep the ball himself. So that's something you got to look out for. Jalen Hurts likes to take off. Something I've noticed is even with receivers open, Jalen Hurts likes to take off. Um, but you know, if, if Zach Hurts is sitting there in free agency, you've got Dallas Goddard sitting on the COVID list right now. Uh, most leagues, if I'm not mistaken, allow you to put that player on IR if they're on the COVID list, throw him on IR, pick up Zach Hurts, don't hesitate to start him. I mean, unless you've got something better, but. You know, he's he's on the waiver wires. This is a waiver wire pickup. Pick up Zach Ertz. That's what I got to say. Yeah, I'll talk more about Zach Ertz later. But, yeah, I, I love him as a pickup and play this week. Like, he is – if you're just needing a bye week replacement, he is definitely a guy to just pick up and play. Now for our next segment, we are going to talk about a couple players each on both a buy low and a sell high. So basically, these are guys that we think have had either disappointing games in this past couple of weeks that you could just trade some low end guys to get them on your bench and maybe down the line he'll be better or guys that just blew up recently or have a big name that you got to get the value while you can and try to sell as high as you can. Um, first off, we'll start with the buy low for guys that are not the best at their positions right now, but could be by the end of the season. And I will start out with my first buy low candidate, which is Javante Williams. With Javante, they traded up to the top of the second round to get him, Denver did. And he has been very good for them so far this season. To me, I think he's looked better than Melvin Gordon has so far this season. And if anything happens to Melvin Gordon, he's going to get all the touches in a very efficient offense. He's going to get a lot of work. Um, And the end of season schedule for Javante is looking to be very good. Very, to me, it's very reminiscent of what David Montgomery had at the end of the season last year and where he went on a tear. So if Javante takes over that RB1 role, I think he could go on a tear and win some championships. I, I completely agree. I like Javante Williams a lot. I liked him a lot coming out of the draft. Um, I liked Michael Carter a little bit more, but Michael Carter plays for the Jets, so he's never going to perform ever, no matter what he does, no matter how good he looks. He is on the Jets. His career is over, unfortunately. Uh, Javante Williams has a good team. He's got a solid offensive line in front of him. The only thing standing in his way right now is Melvin Gordon, like you said. And I do agree with you, like you said. Uh, I think he's looked a lot better than Melvin Gordon has. And basically at this point in time, it, he's a Melvin Gordon injury away from getting every single carry because there is nobody behind uh, Javante Williams on, on their depth chart right now. Mike Boone is the is behind Javante Williams on the depth chart. And, That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah, I know, I know. And I can guarantee you, you're not going to hear it for a much longer time after this, too, because it is that's that might be the last time you heard that name this season. Javante Williams, if Melvin Gordon goes down or at some point in time, Denver's like, hey, Javante Williams has been better. We're going to start giving him more touches. Uh, you know, it's over, it's, especially in a dynasty league. After this season, Melvin Gordon's likely gone. Javante Williams is going to be that lead back. So, I mean, it, it's something for sure to, to give, a, give a look at for sure for Javante Williams. Uh, my first buy low is going to be 
Carson Wentz. Uh, you know, I don't mean to be a homer about this because, you know, we're all Colts fans. Carson Wentz, though, on Monday night looked like MVP Carson Wentz. He took that team and essentially, you know, him and Jonathan Taylor together essentially carried that team because that defense wasn't doing anything. So Carson Wentz is for sure a buy low. If he's, if he's on a waiver wire, it's like he is in a couple of my leagues right now, go pick up Carson Wentz. If he's on somebody's team, you know, trade him one of your bench guys for Carson Wentz because Carson Wentz has a pretty favorable uh, schedule coming up here for the rest of the season. Um, he's got a couple tough matchups against uh, the Bills and the Cardinals and stuff like that. But, you know, Carson Wentz has Houston twice. He's got the Titans again. He's got Jacksonville. Just his division alone is is going to give him some serious looks. If you want to pick up Carson Wentz, that's, that's probably a pretty good option because he had 400 passing yards on Monday night a couple touchdowns. I really feel like as he's starting to build chemistry with his receivers, which it really looks like he's starting to, especially with Michael Pittman, as he builds that chemistry, he's going to start, you know, looking a lot better and better. And he might, I'm not saying he's going to win MVP, but he might start looking like MVP Wentz. The big thing with Wentz is that the Colts offensive line is not fully healthy yet either. So once Braden Smith and Quentin Nelson come back, like this could be a whole new team. And I mean, he, like you said, he threw 400 yards against the Ravens, like the Ravens, like, even though they have some injuries, they're not a, not very good defense. They're still a good defense. So yeah, as, and T Y Hilton, we're not even mentioning T Y Hilton, T Y Hilton's going to be coming back soon too. And that can only, yeah, that can only help once out as things go along. We're going to start seeing things that we didn't see last year with Phillip Rivers because the Wentz can actually throw the ball downfield. So if he gets a deep threat going, uh, even if Paris Campbell stays healthy, Paris Campbell, it was Monday was a game that he can be, you know, not necessarily a deep threat. He wasn't running, you know, streaks, but, you know, running these deep out routes, Paris Campbell showing that he can, he can get open if he needs to and, and you know, is if Carson Wentz can get any receiver that can run down the field and just catch the ball behind the defense, it's over. It really is. Yeah, no, no joke. He, I do, I do like him as a buy low or even waiver pickup this week too. Mm-hmm. Now, as for my next buy low candidate, is going to be Adam Thielen. Which Adam Thielen, he is. He started out great. He had a couple touchdowns right off the bat. Um, but these past couple of weeks has been very rough on him. And the reason I say he is a buy low is that this is the, this past week was the first game this season. He had less than seven targets. He had no touchdowns the last two weeks, which is his main, uh, main points getter for fantasy wise. He usually gets a lot of red zone luck. So I think, the main reason why he hasn't got any touchdowns this past couple of weeks is that the Vikings offense just hasn't been as good. So like they, I think they scored like less than 20 points the last few weeks. So it's better days are ahead, especially once they get Dalvin cook back, Dalvin cook is just going to be able to help them get more points. So the more they can move the ball, the better it'll be. And their end of the season is going to be, pretty good for wide receiver. So he's a guy that you could probably, he's since he hasn't done very well, you might be able to throw a couple bench players at him at the person who owns him because they're frustrated and just hope that you can have him on the bench. And whenever he comes back and starts scoring touchdowns again, you got him. Completely agree. I like Adam Thielen a lot. Um, he, as of right now, is the number 20 receiver in fantasy in a PPR, which isn't too great in like a 12-man league because he, I'm sure for a lot of people, was drafted as a wide receiver one or a wide receiver two, and he really hasn't even been that recently. Um, last week and even the week before was really rough for him because a lot of teams knew, or the two teams from the last two weeks knew that they weren't going to be running the ball too often, even though they did last week, they ran the ball with Alexander Madison last week and did decently well with that. Um, Which is probably why he didn't get too many targets last week is because they were running the ball a lot with Alexander Madison, but 
you know, Adam Thielen as a receiver is, is eventually going to come back into Adam Thielen as a receiver. Kirk Cousins is starting to look, you know, like an actual quarterback, which is fantastic for Vikings fans. It's fantastic for fantasy owners. Um, I love Kirk Cousins owner myself, traded him away, and now it's starting to look like Kirk Cousins is a, a solid quarterback. So I'm hating my life, except I traded them away for Matt Stafford. So, I, you know, can't complain too much. Um, but Adam Thielen, you know, is eventually going to start getting those touchdowns again. He's going to start getting the yards again. Once teams start figuring out uh, Justin Jefferson, you know, Kirk Cousins start looking Adam Thielen's way, which, you know, is not necessarily a bad second option by any means. Uh, my second by low is going to be Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson, the running back for the Rams. We talked about him earlier. He does have some injury concerns at times, but other than that, Daryl Henderson has been really, really solid for LA. Um, he is, as of right now, the number 15 running back in fantasy. However, he's got probably one of the most favorable schedules for running backs coming up. He is... I mean, he's probably got like a top five favorable schedule as of right now, maybe even top three. If if the Rams start getting that offense going even more than they're going out right now, which that offense is going right now. If they start running the ball more with Daryl Henderson, who had 17 carries just last week. So, I mean, it's not like he's just some slouch. It's not like he's like not getting touches. He's getting touches. Um, you start running the ball more, even more than 17 carries, Daryl Henderson's going to start getting you some points. And – he has not this season, aside from the one game he didn't play, he has not had less than 15 fantasy points. So he is almost a guaranteed 15 fantasy points if he stays healthy. The crazy thing about Henderson is, is that he's the 15th running back in PPR, and that is with missing a full game. Yeah. Like, that is nuts. Like, But, yeah, he has looked – crazy good for them and like you said you look at the rest of the season and it's a lot of good matchups for him so yeah he could easily finish as a top 10 running back this year i could like i can definitely see that which is the only reason why i say buy him low is because a lot of players not a lot of players but a decent bit of players are going to look at that number 15 and say you know he's not top 10 what do i care you know have him for a couple bench players what they don't know is that he has got a very favorable matchup, like we mentioned multiple times now. He's got a very favorable matchup in almost every single game this week. Just this next three, the Giants, the Lions, the Texans, which are – let me see here. The Giants are giving up the top ten most points. The Lions are giving up the most points to running backs. And the Texans are giving up the 14th most. So, I mean, just the next three games alone, insanely, like he's he's probably going to go off in the next three games. If not him, Sony Michelle, who we mentioned earlier is a waiver wire pickup, could also get some serious touches in games against teams that are very, very bad against running backs. So, you know, buy him low as he is probably decently low right now. Buy him where he's at, and he's he's gonna he's gonna perform for you, I promise. Yeah, if you could like maybe package like Leonard Fournette or Chase Edmonds with another bench player, I would definitely do that. Like something like that. I gotta say they may not take a couple bench players, but if you throw in like your RB two, which may be like a guy like Leonard Fournette or Chase Edmonds, to get them, I would definitely do that. Or even these guys that we can we can we're about to to sell high. Even these guys. I gotta say that could be. If you include one of my guys that I have next, which is Miles Gaskin as a sell high candidate, Miles Gaskin went ballistic this past week against Tampa Bay. Um, let me look up his stats real quick from this past week because it was nuts. But either way, starting off is Gaskin. He was missing Will Fuller and Devontae Parker this game, so that means that's why he got more targets, got more usage in this game. So he got a lot of work this game whenever two of his best players were out. Now, part of that was is that they were playing from behind the whole game as well, so they had to throw more. And with Tampa Bay, they can get some pressure on you, so Jacoby had to throw some checkdowns as well, which Gaskin was the 
benefactor of that. Um, weeks one through four alone, Gaskin had 16 targets combined. And now this week he had 10 targets in this game alone. So if it wasn't for this game, he is just kind of an average guy. But if you can sell him for any value after this game, I would. Because Malcolm Brown's been getting usage and they're going to get Tua back soon, which is going to help them pass the ball more. So, yeah, I would just try to sell him if you could. Completely agree. I, I liked Miles Gassing a lot coming into this season, uh, mostly because Miami said straight up, we're going to use Miles Gassing a lot. He looked really good last season. Um, Miami said they were going to use him and just never used him this season. Um, it's not like he himself has been bad because when they actually do use him, he performs. He has not averaged less than five carries or five yards a carry all season, uh, except for the game against the Colts. Um, every other game against that, he, he, I mean, he's got five yards of carry. I mean, that's not, it's not like he's performing bad. He's got five yards of carry and at least five receptions every week and just isn't doing anything with the ball. Mostly due to the fact that Miami is trying to use that running back by committee approach and it's just not working. You need to use Miles Gaskin as that feature back and they're not going to do that this season. It just does not look they're not showing any signs of doing that this season. He really did go off this year or this week, um, which is the perfect time to sell him because everybody's going to look at that and they're going to say, Hey, like this, this is probably what it's going to be for the rest of the season. And I promise you it's not, he's going to go right back to where he was. This was a complete outlier game. Tampa Bay, not great against the run. Um, I'm sorry. No, they actually are. They're, they're, they're decent against the run. They're about mid pack. I gotta um, say they're pretty good against the run. It's just that, teams don't run on them very often like Gaskin he only had five rushes yeah it's, it's it was more the receiving game that he was mm-hmm. featured in that really got Tampa Bay which Tampa Bay is not good the big stuff there um it is you know it's Miles Gaskin I I really like like I said I liked him a lot coming into this season hasn't done anything and I've lost all interest in him. I traded for him in our, our blue stable league traded for him before the season started, got him, didn't do anything for me, traded him away immediately. And I think that's what everybody else should be doing right now. While his value is about at peak as it's going to be this season, you trade him away this week before he doesn't do anything against Jacksonville. He might do something against Jacksonville, but I don't really think, you know, it's going to be anything for the rest of the season. It may look like he's got favorable matchups coming up, but they're going to go right back to that running back by committee approach. And they're going to go right back to having Tua try to, you know, air the ball out more, which is not going to be favoring him well. Um, my first sell high here is another running back. And this one may come as a shock to most people because he looks like he is finally starting to come into his own. That is going to be Tampa Bay's Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette has started looking like first round pick Leonard Fournette recently. He is getting the touches. He is getting the receptions, which he doesn't normally get. He's being featured a lot in this offense. And I promise you, it's probably not going to keep up. It is really hard to keep up as a running back in a pass heavy offense. He may get some, you know, some targets every now and then as the receiver out of the backfield. And Ronald Jones has clearly shown that he is not that guy uh, out of the backfield at all. But Leonard Fournette has the worst schedule for a running back coming up. The rest of the season is not favoring him as of at all. He has, and I'm not exaggerating, he has the worst schedule for a starting running back coming up. Um, so you sell him where he's at now, which is, I mean, he's only the 16th best running back in fantasy right now. But the last couple games has really made it look like they're going to be using him and featuring him in this offense. But once Tom Brady starts getting into a groove and starts throwing to Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, even Tyler Johnson's been looking decent. Once Gronk comes back, he's going to be throwing to him. OJ Howard's getting featured a little bit now. I mean, it's not going to last. Leonard Fournette right now, his, his value is at peak. You, you want to get rid of him, which I am probably going to do myself. I've got him on a couple teams. I'm going to get rid of Leonard Fournette myself. He may do well a week, you know, like next week he might do well. The week after that he might do all right. 
but it's not going to keep up for the entire season. You want to sell him where he's at. You want to get your highest value for him, fill in any holes you have on your roster, use, use them to, to what you can. The big thing is, is whenever you're selling high, you're selling high and getting high value back. So even if he keeps going the way he is, you're still getting high value back. So it doesn't matter. Right. It's, it's the only way you can lose is if you get a couple players back in return that don't do good at all. So if you're selling high, try to get a decent player or package for net with another player to upgrade at the position. Like we just said, package for net with a, another wide receiver that's doing decent and go upgrade to get like Henderson or something like that that can win you a fantasy championship down the stretch. Or you could even trade Farnett and get Javante Williams plus another bench wide receiver if you wanted. Um, but yeah, I do agree. Buccaneers running backs are hard to predict. If Farnett fumbles a game, he might get in Bruce Arians' doghouse and it's a Ronald Jones show. So it's just one of those things you don't know if this will keep on going. Mm. Now, moving on to my next player is going to be wide receiver of the Denver Broncos, Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton did very good (laughs) this past Sunday. And I want to sell high for a couple reasons. And the main reason is because Jerry Judy is going to be coming back sooner rather than later. I, I don't know who Teddy Bridgewater is going to like more now because at the beginning of the season, it looked like it was going to be Jerry Judy because Jerry Judy had seven targets in week one compared to Sutton's three. But now that Judy's been out and Sutton's been the main guy that Bridgewater has been throwing to, maybe Sutton is now the guy. But after Sutton just had seven catches for 120 yards and a touchdown. If you can get some good value for him, I would do that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Cortland Sutton is – I like him a lot. I I like a lot of these guys we've been talking about a lot. But Cortland Sutton, I I always liked. He was a later-round pick, if I'm not mistaken. What was he, a second-round, third-round pick? I'm not sure what round he was, to be honest. But it was, it was something around there. It was yeah, like a mid-round. Yeah, so uh, it was towards the mid. Yeah. But I, I liked him a lot. I thought he should have been a higher pick than he was wherever he went. I'm sure I thought he was should have been a higher pick. Um, the only issue that I've been having with Cortland Sutton is that he has these games where he just goes off and then is quiet for a couple weeks which really showed in week two, he had, I mean, nine receptions, 159 yards, went off. Every week after, or the two weeks after that, nothing. Then last week against the Steelers, who were actually pretty decent against the pass, seven receptions, 120 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, like, it really seems like he's on and off, but if you are, you know, selling him right now, especially right now, where it looks like he is, going to continue to do this once jerry judy comes back once this running game gets going more than it's already going i mean Cortland sutton is going to get you some value because it, it's not going to keep up for the season i like Cortland sutton a lot but it's not going to keep up for the season we're pretty matched up here in terms of our sell highs because you had a running back then i had a running back you had a receiver and i've got another receiver and this one you're don't call me crazy but if you're watching this right now and you're li- or you're listening to this or whatever you're doing, I need you to go and I need you to trade away Odell Beckham Jr. Odell alone is not the Odell of old, and I don't think he's ever going to get back to the Odell of old. Um, no receiver in this Browns offense has really been doing much of anything. They've really been leaning heavily on the run, which shouldn't surprise anybody. Odell Beckham Jr. is a name at this point, and that's what you're selling right now. You're selling based off of the fact that people are going to assume that Odell is going to become Odell again. He's not. I'm I'm telling you right now for free, he is not going to become Odell Beckham Jr. again. He is just a name at this point. You sell him as he is before, you know, we get too far into this season 
and he just continues not to show, you get too far into the season, he's going to look like he should just be a waiver pickup because that's really all he's going to be. You sell him now as Odell Beckham Jr., you're going to get some decent value for him, which is going to be, you know, decent value is better than the no value you're going to get from his production later in the season. I promise you that. Yeah, I know he missed the first couple games of the season, but he is currently sitting at wide receiver 88. Now, he had the one good game where he came back, five receptions for 77 yards. But you also got to look, Jarvis Landry's out right now. When he comes back, I don't know if Odell's going to be anything. Like, if Odell's name wasn't Odell Beckham, he would be on the waiver wires right now. Because Mm -hmm. past two weeks, two receptions for 27 yards, two receptions for 20 yards. That is not a guy that you're going to keep on your bench if you have anybody that's not named Odell Beckham Jr. So if you can trade him away just on name value alone, even if it's just a bench player at this point, like if I'm getting Tim Patrick for Odell, I'd do it just because I don't want Odell. Another guy that I think is in the same situation that I just want to mention right now is Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson really hasn't looked great this season, and I don't know if it's going to get any better because Justin Fields loves Darnell Mooney, it seems like, and Allen Robinson just hasn't got the same work as he's got in previous years. And I, I mean, I completely agree. And it almost seems like Allen Robinson just wants out of Chicago in general, it, it, which we knew to begin with before the season ever started. We knew he wanted out of Chicago. And it almost felt like he just wanted a better quarterback. He's got a better quarterback now. Justin Fields hasn't quite come into what, you know, the hype that Justin Fields was supposed to have. But it really seems like Allen Robinson just doesn't want to be there. And if he's going to be on the Bears – and Matt Nagy's offense, which isn't really good at all. I mean, none of these players are going to perform well in this offense. You know, Allen Robinson's a big sell high just based off of name alone because I don't think he's going to do much of anything this season as long as he is in Chicago. Yeah, not really very much at this point. And if he does well, great for him, but I just don't want that headache on my team anymore, especially after you drafted Robinson and probably around the third round of this year's draft, fantasy draft. So, yeah, I think it's just time to cut ties. Now, looking at this next week, we want to give you our starts of the week. We're going to do one position each at each position. We'll start off with quarterbacks, go running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. We're not going to do kickers and defenses just because those are – yeah, they should not be a thing in fantasy, really, to be honest. (laughs) <laughs> I'm saying this as I'm wearing a Pat McAfee for the brand shirt, but, <laughs> but you know, yeah. Uh, to me, if you want my opinions on him, then add me on Twitter and I'll, <laughs> I'll talk to you about him. <laughs> but we'll start off with quarterbacks. I'll say mine and then I'll let you go, Austin. But starting out with my quarterback start of the week, it's going to be Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has been crazy good for fantasy. And that's mainly based off of his rushing value alone. Because if you look at this past week, he had less than 200 passing yards and an interception. Now, if your quarterback in fantasy gets you that, normally it's a bad week. Normally, that just lost you the week. But he was still quarterback seven. And that is because he had... Nine rushing attempts for 30 yards and two rushing touchdowns. So he is quarterback seven on the season overall. He's got a good matchup against Tampa Bay. So I I think he's going to be good as a passer and a rusher this game. And I think that he could be a top five quarterback this week in fantasy. Oh, for sure. Like I, I don't I don't see any way that he's not going to be. Um Jalen Hurts as a top 10 fantasy quarterback as of right now. I almost said fantasy running back because that's kind of what it seems like he is, but he is a top 10 fantasy quarterback because he also does throw the ball and that gets him those extra points. And no matter what he does through the air, he's still going to get you uh, on the ground as well. And Tampa Bay is a very favorable matchup for him because Tampa Bay is not good at defending anything through the air. Um, at the same time, Tampa Bay isn't, you know, I, I, I can't speak for how they do against rushing quarterbacks, but Tampa Bay against Jalen Hurts cannot be good because they haven't really seen anything like Jalen Hurts before. And I guarantee they're not going to see anything like him after this. 
because he, if nothing is there, like I said before, um, with his receivers, if there's nothing there, Jalen Hurts will take off and he will torch you on the ground, similar to Lamar Jackson. I don't think he's quite on Lamar Jackson's level, but he will torch you on the ground. Yeah, I gotta say he is no Lamar Jackson, but yeah, he's still a great quarterback to me, rushing wise. He's I don't know if he's gonna be their long term starter after this year, but at this point in fantasy this year, he's he's a good play. Especially this week. Especially this especially week. Especially this week. If if you've got him as a backup and he's sitting on your bench and I don't care who you've got, you've got to put him in there because he's gonna he'll probably be a top three fantasy quarterback this week i don't want to guarantee that but it's pretty likely uh my first start of the week at quarterback is going to be uh carson wentz i think carson wentz is going to build off of that momentum that he had on that monday night game i think he's going to take all that anger from that terrible terrible loss that the colts suffered at a major comeback by the ravens i think he's going to take that and i think he's going to basically force it down the Texans' throats. I think the Texans, as we know, are not good really against anything. Um, they are a top 10, giving up like top 10 most fantasy points to quarterbacks right now. If Carson Wentz can take what he got on Monday against a pretty solid passing defense with the Ravens, if he can take that, build on that, build on what he had with Michael Pittman, what he started getting with Paris Campbell, what he's already seemed to have with uh, Zach Pascal. It doesn't matter, you know, what's going on. Eventually, T.Y. Hilton's going to come back, but that's this is just starts up this week against Houston. Carson Wentz feels like I feel like he's going to torch the the Texans. I really do. I don't think he's going to have quite the performance he did, but I think he'll have at least probably 250 yards. I'd say maybe maybe two touchdowns. So I think he's a pretty solid start. Yeah, and big thing is is that this is almost a must win for the Colts because we got the Titans coming up in a few weeks, and if they aren't the same record by the time we play the Titans, it's not going to be good. And especially with Houston not being that great of a division opponent, if we lose against them, it, that would just almost theoretically end the season. So, yeah, they are definitely going to be playing to win, and they, unlike this past week, they are not going to let their foot off the gas pedal. They are yeah. going to go for it. Now, moving on to running backs, I have as my start of the week, Devontae Booker against the Rams. Now, I know talking it out loud does not sound like a good matchup. <laughs> You're telling me that you want me to start a running back against Aaron Donald. Yes, I, I do. It is not something that I love to say, but I'm going to say it just to throw it out there. I'm not trying to give you obvious plays like mid-tier guys. I want like deeper ones. So that way, if you have them, if you pick them up this week, feel confident to play them. If you're looking at running backs against the Rams so far this year, Week one, David Montgomery had 108 rushing yards. And Damian Williams, that same game, had 28 receiving yards. Um, week two, the Buccaneers were playing from behind, so there's only nine rushing attempts from the running backs, so they didn't get much going on there. Jonathan Taylor, he had 51 yards whenever the Rams played the Colts, which I wish the Colts would have gave Taylor the ball more, but they were constantly playing from behind, it, so they were throwing the ball more. Um, where they played the Cardinals, Chase Edmonds had 120 rushing yards, and James Conner had 50 rushing yards with two rushing touchdowns. And Alex Collins this past week had 47 rushing yards. I like Booker more than I like Alex Collins. And with Daniel Jones probably being out, I think they're going to try to lean on the run game more. And Devontae Booker really isn't that bad of a running back. He's not great by any means, but he is a solid guy that can fill in for an injured starter. Um, we saw it with the Raiders the past couple of years. So I want to say that I feel confident. I don't really feel that great about it, 
but I do feel confident enough that he would be a flex play for me this week. Yeah, I, I can agree. If if you've got Devontae Booker on your bench, feel free to throw him in that flex because I, I genuinely think that if Daniel Jones does not play this week, they've got nothing else going on in that offense except for Kadarius Tony. So Devontae Booker, who already the Giants like using their running backs in the red zone, you put Devontae Booker in there. He had 16 touches last week, and that was with Saquon Barkley playing, uh, you know, some chunk of the game too. 16 touches last week, just on the ground, and then four targets through the air. I mean, no Saquon Barkley, no Kenny Galladay, no uh, Sterling Shepard, no Darius Slayton. Who's there? Kadarius Toney. And it's Devontae Booker. And it's going to be the Devontae Booker show. I'm not saying he's going to go off. I'm not saying the Rams are terrible against, you know, running backs. But, you know, fact of the matter is that there's nobody else on that offense to play offense. So Devontae Booker, Darius Tony, pretty much either one of those two. If you got Devontae Booker seen on your bench, throw him into flex, he'll probably get a touchdown this week. It, it's, it almost seems like a guarantee. I'd be surprised if he did it. You got to say volume is king in fantasy football, and he is going to get the volume just because yeah. there's nobody else to take the volume from him. It's a, it's a pretty big part about, you know, fantasy in general is volume. And it's if there's nobody else there to take his touches from him, he's getting that volume. So, I mean, it's not like this should be a pretty obvious, at least a flex. It's got to be a flex probably. Um, my start of the weekend running back is – James Robinson and I know most people think at this point James Robinson is just you know he's a a top not top guy but he he is up there as a running back as of right now he is the number 11 running back in fantasy but that is only because of the last three weeks of him going off on the ground uh 24 points uh three weeks ago 20 points two weeks ago 21 points last week James Robinson is on a tear right now and he is going up against the Miami Dolphins this week, who are terrible against the run. Second, they're giving up the second most points in the league. They are not good against running backs. James Robinson, if you've got a, you know three or four running backs on your team who you're not sure who to start, if James Robinson is one of those who you're not sure, please ensure that James Robinson is in your lineup because he is going to go off this week against a team who already can't defend the run. And he is, he's on a hot streak. I'm not saying this hot streak is going to last forever, but this weekend just has to last. And I can't see any other way that it's going to go. Yeah. At the beginning of the season, James Robinson looked like he was going to be a bust fantasy wise because Carlos Hyde was playing snaps, a lot of snaps for no good reason because Urban Meyer really isn't great yeah, whenever it comes to... I love my Buckeyes, but why was Carlos Hyde getting... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like I understand Travis Etienne got hurt and you're kind of wanting to replace that, but Carlos Hyde is not a guy that you want to be replacing Travis Etienne. I'm back on your, your bell cow. Yeah. But yeah, after his first couple of weeks where he only had five and 11 attempts, the past three weeks, he's had 15 attempts, 18 attempts, and 18 attempts. And it's turned out into great fantasy finishes each week. He's had over 20 points the past three weeks. I don't see, I, I still think he's going to get 20 points again this week against the Dolphins. So I think it's going to be a competitive game to where they don't abandon the run. I think they're going to be both passing and running the ball. So yeah, I like, I like James Robinson this week, too. As for wide receivers, this next wide receiver, me and Austin both like this week. I know we both had him as our start of the week, and we both debated which one we want to take. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be Deontay Johnson. I, Deontay Johnson is going to just be a target hog for the Steelers. I know this past week he only had two targets, and he hit on one with a 50-yard touchdown. But the past – those other weeks he was getting like 13, 14 targets a week. And with Juju Smith-Schuster out the rest of the year, I think Deontay is just going to get even more targets. He's going to get even more work. And plus he's got a good matchup this week. So I think you stuff him in your lineup wherever you can. If you have him on your bench, there is no reason for him to be on your bench. I know he was a not a top-round selection for wide receiver just because – of the worries of Big Ben, 
but Big Ben loves throwing the ball to to Deontay, and you can't ignore that. You got to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Uh, Like you said, I I also had Deontay Johnson as my start of the week. I had to change that up um, because you had him as yours, but I still get to talk to him about him, so it's all right. Um, Very big on Deontay Johnson. I always liked him a lot, especially last year. He did pretty solid last year with Chase Claypool coming up and Juju already being Juju. Um, I always thought Juju was a little overrated, but that's just me. Um, But this week, for sure, he's got a pretty favorable matchup. I like to bring out the statistics. The Seahawks are giving up the eighth most points to fantasy receivers. Eighth. Last week, Deontay Johnson had 15 fantasy points and only had two receptions. So, I mean, you know, you give him the targets, which he's going to get now. Like you said, Juju's out for the year. He's going to start getting those targets now. Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, James White. I mean, two of those names are not like the other name that I said. James Washington. James Washington not James yeah. White. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, but, yeah, it, Deontay Johnson at this point right now is, is the wide receiver one. I think Ben likes him a little more than he likes Chase Claypool, which is strange because I like Chase Claypool a little more than I like Deontay Johnson. But I'm not the quarterback. I'm not the one getting the fantasy points. So if he if he's going to give the ball to Deontay Johnson, let him give the ball to Deontay Johnson. He should be in your flex at the absolute least because he's going to get some at least probably 15 points against the Seahawks. Yeah, I'd be definitely willing to throw Deontay Johnson as my wide receiver too this week. And Chase Claypool, like you said, he could definitely be a flex as well. Um, James Washington, I know he was hurt. They don't know if he's going to play this week yet. Um, he might not. And if he doesn't, then that's more targets to the other guys. Especially, I mean, Najee hasn't been doing terrible, but I feel like they've really been relying more on the pass and they've been relying on Najee Harris. So, I mean, by all means, start Deontay Johnson. I have no problems with that. Um, Because you took Deontay Johnson from me, I had to go and switch up my wide receiver. I went with Emmanuel Sanders. Now, Emmanuel Sanders... It may not sound, and I, I'm going to be honest, until I look deeper into this, I didn't realize how good Emmanuel Sanders was doing this year. Emmanuel Sanders right now is a top 20 wide receiver. Now, I know they've got a very pass-heavy offense. They've got a lot of mouths to feed on that offense. Cole Beasley, Stephon Diggs, Dawson Knox is starting to come into fruition now. They've got a lot of mouths to feed, but Emmanuel Sanders has been getting some serious, serious targets. As of right now, he is leading – the entire NFL in end zone targets. Now he has four touchdowns this year. You know, two, there were, that's four touchdowns between two games, but I mean, Emmanuel Sanders has still been doing very, very well. Like I said, top 20 receiver right now, he's got a very, 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 very favorable matchup against Tennessee. Tennessee is terrible, terrible, terrible against the pass. They are, and I'm not exaggerating when I say they're terrible. They are giving up the most points to fantasy wide receivers, the most in the league. If Emmanuel Sanders is sitting on your bench or he's in, if even if he's sorry, if he's in free agency right now, pick him up, put him in there. He should be at least your flex this week. Stefan Diggs is going to get some targets, but so is Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders is going to have at least a touchdown. I almost guarantee it. Yeah, it's crazy to think that Sanders has been outproducing Diggs the way he has, but he just has. And, I mean, I know he had two touchdowns this past week, but he only had three receptions too, which is crazy. Which, I mean, I would like it if my receivers that only have three catches have two touchdowns, but I don't know if that's going to be an every week thing. Um, But, yeah, he's got a good matchup this week. I think he's – Going to get targets this week. I don't think that he's, I, I think he'll probably get more than three receptions. Now, moving on to tight ends, we talked about this guy already this show, but it's going to be Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz is, if it wasn't for Dallas Goddard, he could potentially be a top 10 tight end in fantasy football so far this year. Um, I know we talked about it already. Tampa Bay really isn't that great against the tight ends and they that's who they play on Thursday night and barring a miracle Dallas Goddard's going to be out and it's going to be a Zach Ertz show Zach Ertz is out got more targets than what Dallas Goddard has had so far this season he's outproduced him 
Well, actually, Dallas Goddard is higher in fantasy, but he has got more targets than him lately. And now, without Dallas Goddard, he's going to be alone. And with a great matchup, I think he's a guy you can pick straight off the waiver wire, plug him in your lineup, and expect at least a touchdown from him this week. Yeah, completely agree with that. I mean, it is, like we said earlier, there's there's nothing stopping Zach Ertz right now including wide receivers. In the receiving game, there's pretty much nothing there. Um, Devontae Smith, end of list. So, I mean, right now he's battling for targets with Devontae Smith, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Dallas Goddard going down is huge for this matchup. Um, Tampa Bay is top 10 worst against tight ends. So, you know. Zach Ertz is already a really good tight end. We, we spoke about this earlier. He's already a really good tight end. If Jalen Hurts is going to get him the ball like he has been the last couple of weeks, it's a really, really good option this week at tight end. Uh, my tight end start of the week is it's, it's a, a strange one, but it's really not as strange as you may think. It is Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby this season is the best tight end in fantasy. And, you know, it sounds it sounds all right. 14, you know, like, hey, you know, it's pretty mid pack. You know, 14 isn't really anything great when it comes to tight ends. And once you get off like the top three or four, you know, you're looking at bench guys that you're just, you know, they're just there to get extra points for you. So 14 isn't anything great. This is more of this week's matchup. He has the New York Giants who are very, very bad against the tight ends. He has a very high powered offense. If Matt Stafford can start getting going, Tyler Higby is also top 10 in the NFL in red zone targets. So if Matt Stafford's getting going, if they get down into that red zone, he's going to be looking Tyler Higby's way a lot. Tyler Higby already has two touchdowns this season. He's looking to build off of that, I'm sure. He had one last week against Seattle. If he's in the red zone against the Giants, who have nobody over the middle to cover a tight end, especially a 6'6 tight end, I'm sure Matt Stafford won't hesitate to look his way, and I'm sure that there would probably be something to as well. Yeah, I think Higby's a great play this week. He, he's he been a solid tight end this whole year. He hasn't been very great. He hasn't been bad. He's just been pretty average. Um, outside of week two against Indy, he's had over seven fantasy po- seven PPR fantasy points per game. So, yeah, I definitely think he's an easy play this week. He should get a touchdown against this Giants defense, especially since they're going to have the ball a lot with the Giants not having much of an offense. Um, So, yeah, I really like him this week as well. Well, to end off the show, is there anything else you'd like to say, Austin, before we leave everybody? I don't think so. I'm just I'm just saying that our, our fantasy opinions are like gospel. I promise. It, these are correct opinions in our 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 blue stable league right now. We're both doing very well. So we have the credentials. If you want to see the credentials, I'm undefeated in our league. I don't know about you. So yeah, I think Austin's over here five and oh, I'm four and one in this blue stable league. So I mean <laughs> I don't know I think, what I to think... say, but I don't know about you. Got yeah we know what we're talking about i think i think our our word is we did our research it's not we're doing our research for you all right so we're, we're telling you what needs to be done we spent all this time doing this research doing statistics everything like that just to tell you you want help in your fantasy league we're here for that yeah we're here to help everybody win fantasy championships we're not here to help me and you austin win fantasy championships because we can do that in private we're here to help other people help win them fantasy championships. So if you want any advice, I know not everybody has the time to do their own research. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the fantasy table. My personal ad is at big Verkamp and Austin's is at the Austin Isaac. They're in the fantasy tables, Twitter bio as well. If you want to follow us from there. Um, I know I will be tweeting throughout the week on any updated news, I'll quote usually like quote tweet the source 
tweet of it and kind of give my opinion on it. Isaac is free to do so as well whenever he gets the time. Um, if you have start uh, sitting out too often, um, I don't normally eat out actually at all, really. But if my DMs are always open, feel free to shoot me a DM. I will always reply to things as well. If you want to tweet at me, um, you have any questions, I'm always here. Yeah, start sit questions, just add them to us. You can either add our personals or at the fantasy table. You, if you have waiver wire, ask like, hey, do I drop this person for this person? Then you can ask us. Um, really, any any sort of fantasy question you have, just feel free to ask us. We'll give our opinion on them. Before we leave, I do know there is one thing that got brought up that I just want to touch on because I just never remembered it. But one of our other writers, Sebastian, in one of his leagues, he had Adam Thielen and Mike Williams, and he started Adam Thielen, which turned out unfortunate because Mike Williams went off. And I just want to say, if you have Mike Williams, he is an every week starter until proven otherwise. He has gotten so many targets in this offense. He is being utilized the way that he needs to. He is definitely just an every week starter. He is probably going to be the draft steal of the year for fantasy. Um, But if you have him, yeah, start him and don't look back. I'd like to add to my credentials here. I, I did see this coming. I, I have to say I did see this coming. I drafted Mike Williams in all five leagues that I am in. I drafted Mike Williams, and it is paying off. I'll tell you that right now. So Mike Williams and Cooper Cup as well. I drafted Cooper Cup in most of my leagues too, which a lot of people thought I was crazy for. They're like, why Cooper Cup? This is why. This is why you listen to us. This is why we give you the advice a combined nine and one record in our in our blue stable league right now. So I mean, we we know what we're talking about. We know what we're doing. I promise. You guys say I did also get DJ Moore in like the fifth round, so I, I am very happy about that one as well. I gotta say we both we both did pretty good on draft day. I think, I think we did. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, guys, we're going to let you go after that. This has been the Fantasy Table, brought to you by the Blue Stable. Make sure to go follow us on Twitter and ask us anything that you have. All right. We'll see you guys. See you.